Hello everyone! In this video, I'm going to teach you how to use multiple maneuver nodes in your game. We'll start with looking at the tools that the game gives you to easily hop from one node to the other. We'll also be looking at why you would use multiple nodes in the first place. This is going to include planning your burns out so that you know what the fuel costs are going to be before you ever get started, and we'll take a close look at two specific scenarios. One a low orbit rendezvous and the other an interplanetary flyby. Well, we'll see how looking many orbits in advance will allow us to be as fuel efficient as we possibly can be. So, let's get started. All right, so here we have the Nerve One being piloted by two of my wonderful patrons, Philip P and Tim D. And they've got themselves into a bit of a situation. See, this is kind of a Kerbin system runabout. It has the Delta V, it had the Delta V to be able to go out to the moon or go out to Mimis, but what it can't do is it cannot land safely on Kerbin. Has no parachutes, has no kind of aerodynamic la wings or landing gear or anything like that. And moreover, it only has 239 meters per second of Delta V left. And what these two want to do is to get themselves to our space station here, our tutorial station uh, that we saw during our space shuttle, briefly during our space shuttle episode. And they're in, they've gotten themselves into this sort of low carbon orbit, but a rather eccentric. They need to get themselves to the station, and moreover, they only have 239 meters per second left. They want to do this as efficiently as possible. So let's first of all start by setting our station as a target. And you can see just with the way things are working out, yeah, we're not coming anywhere close to the station. We need to do a little bit of manipulation in order to get ourselves there. Now, one thing we can do, let's unselect the target for now is I do have math videos to figure out what kind of Delta V does it take to get from this orbit to the orbit of the station, but you can do it in game by using a couple of multiple nodes. The most efficient thing for you to do is to get your plot stealth out towards apoapsis and do a burn to get your periapsis to match with the uh, orbit of the station. So why don't we do this just for now to see how much that would cost. So I'm just going to put a maneuver here right out here at Apoapsis. I'm going to go over to select our little widgety tool here and I'm just going to push this out. Oh, we can up the scale here a little bit. Just so approximately, I mean, I can look at the station here. The station's in an altitude of 119.7 kilometers. So if we can push that out to about the same, I'm sure that'll be close enough. There we go, that's pretty good. And then our next burn would be to rendezvous with the station, but that's going to just cost the same as it would take to insert ourselves into an orbit that's identical to the station. So although we don't wouldn't do this with a maneuver, it ends up being costing the amount that this maneuver will be. So if we do a little bit of retrograde here at periapsis, and bring our apoapsis down till it just matches. And again, we can get over to our little widgety tool if we really want to dial this in. Oh, I think I went actually a little bit too far. That's pretty darn close. And I can look at the burn here. Now, be careful. What this indicator here is showing is what the cost of your next burn is going to be. So that's this burn out here at apoapsis. It's going to be about 22 meters per second. If I want to know the cost of the second burn, notice that down here in the tools you do have the ability to switch back and forth between the two maneuvers, as well if it ever gets to the point where it's off of the maneuvers entirely, you can actually select your maneuvers from here as well. But if I put it on the editor details here, whoops, I just came off, <laughs> I can actually see the amount of the burn as well, at least the amount of prograde, normal, and radial, although I put nothing in for normal. It'd be nice if there was a window here to give you the total. If you know the Pythagorean theorem, you can figure it out for yourself, but I can see here that the, because it's only prograde, I got a 22 meter per second prograde burn on the first maneuver, and my second maneuver is retrograde, notice the negative sign, of 87. So, 22 plus 87 
makes a hundred and nine, I can do this, 109 meters per second is what this is all going to cost me if I do it as efficiently as possible. I have 239 meters per second left, so I should be able to do this handily, but I do have to be a little careful. I can't muss around too much. So the first thing to do is I'm gonna to go to the second maneuver here and we're going to get rid of this. And what I need to do, whoops. There it goes. And what I need to do to start off with is actually do this first maneuver. So let's get ourselves out there and do that. I'm using a bit of RCS to finish this off. But there we go, there we're done. So now what we've done is we set our periapsis. Let's take the number off so it'll match up with the orbit of our station. We're gonna aim to rendezvous with the station right here. Once again, we'll set the station as a target. And as you can see, we're coming nowhere near. Now, what I've done in the past is talk about orbit phasing where you can make a maneuver and start to adjust the period of your orbit. Oh, I need to come a little bit forward to make that happen. Adjust the period of the orbit so I can get a rendezvous. See what I'm doing here? I'm bringing this in. So we will get a rendezvous and I'm doing that by increasing the apoapsis of our orbit so that we'll come out to here and that will slow us down and then we'll come around and meet, match the station. But notice that this burn's costing me 201 meters per second and I still got to match velocities with the station. Uh, I won't be able to do it with what I have left. So that flat out is not going to work. So let's delete that maneuver. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in a maneuver right here. And the thing to notice is that if I take this maneuver and I move it to just the other side of the periapsis, see how that encounter indicator up here jumps back and forth. This is where our target's going to be when we're down here on our current pass. But the next time we go around, our target is going to be here, a little bit closer to where we want it to be. So what we need to do is we need to wait a bunch of orbits until this target icon has come all the way around and is going to be pretty close to matching up where we're going to be. We can do that by going down here to our little widget and simply hitting the pop ahead and orbit button. So if I go along here on our third pass, our target's going to be here. On our next pass, our target's going to be here. On our next pass, our target is going to be here. Now you might be starting to get, ooh, this is getting really close. If I burn prograde at this point, notice that I can start to bring that target icon in closer. But the thing to realize is, is this is not the most efficient way to do it. In order to match velocities with our station, we're gonna need to bring our orbit down to the station's orbit, this yellow orbit. And by burning prograde, notice that we're bringing our orbit in the wrong direction, right? We're burning, we're increasing our apoapsis only to have to bring it back down again. That's a less efficient way to do things. So what I should do is go ahead one more orbit till my target is passed and burn retrograde. And now I'm bringing my apoapsis here in the direction I need to bring it anyway. And at the same time, I'm bringing my close encounter indicator down in here close. Now there's a lot of icons here at the same time, but one of them is the separation icon of 113. So we can start to push, burn retrograde, bringing that number down. I know it's a little, let's put it in a better spot. There we go. In fact, why don't we use the widget here? You can see each time I'm burning retrograde, we're getting closer. Oh, I went a little too far and we can tweak this in all well, just the way you would normally. You should be able to get this. Oh, oh, I saw pretty close. Pretty close there. Look at, oh, 0 0.1. 0 0.1 kilometers is obviously pretty good. So what we have here is a burn that we're gonna do after several orbits. It's two hours and 46 minutes away. Uh, the burn is only 23 meters per second, but that should set us up for a rendezvous doing in after one more orbit after that. By the way, you can also put in a second maneuver on your current orbit to adjust this. That doesn't save you anything in this particular situation, but we're gonna talk about it in the next situation where it does save you something. Right now though, all we gotta do is get ourselves to this maneuver in two hours and 46 minutes. So let's do that. Again, 
that off. We can use RCS to kind of finish this off. Notice here our indicator, we can get the, oh, 64 meters. I think I don't need to do anything more than that. There we go. So we're gonna be meeting up in 36 minutes and 23 seconds. And from here on in, this is a rendezvous like you've seen me do in previous videos. So I don't think I need to talk about that one in particular detail. There we are. We have docked with the station. Let's get on to our second scenario where we have admittedly a rather janky looking probe um, that uh, had, you can imagine that it had just flown by Eve here. And while we were going by Eve, I thought, why don't I get myself a little bit of a gravity assist, do a little bit of a burn and see if we can not get ourselves out to Duna with the same probe. However, this probe was never really designed for any of this. And if we take a look here, we only have 158 meters per second. No way I'm gonna get a capture of Duna with that, but perhaps I can orchestrate myself a bit of a flyby. Now, if I'm super duper lucky, if I set Duna with a target, we will be encountering Duna, but no, that's not gonna happen. You can see here that we are going to be missing Duna entirely. Well, that's okay. What we can do again is use much the same sort of trick we just used with an extra little bit of a twist. We're actually gonna be manipulating two nodes at the same time. So the first thing is the same thing as before. This is going to be, let's see here, when, yes, when we are here, our target is going to be here. So that's not good enough. So let's see what's happening on our next orbit now. So we'll put in another maneuver and we won't put anything into this maneuver. We'll just kind of manipulate it here, put it on the little widgety tool and we'll pop ahead in orbit. And you can see this is what we're gonna be on a subsequent orbit. Still not good enough. We're gonna keep hopping ahead until we happen to come close. Now be careful. The thing to realize here is we're jumping ahead years. We're already two years and 223 days in the future, but that's the nature of orbital mechanics. If you want to save fuel, you need to sacrifice time and expediency. But we're not in a rush, we're okay. These look like they're kinda close. Let's see if we can do ourselves a little bit better. We'll pop ahead another orbit. Oh, that's pretty far away. Let's pop ahead another orbit. Let's pop, oh, oh, no, okay. These are getting, I think, probably as close as we're gonna get it. Yes, this is seven years in the future, but you know, we got what we got. Now, I'm gonna just, man this maneuver can be anywhere along this orbit here. So I'm just gonna put it here so it's well out of the way. And what I could do is I can start manipulating this orbit, but if I really wanna be efficient, what I should be doing is tweaking my current orbit so that a little bit of a change now makes a big change in seven years in the future. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna put a maneuver just ahead of us. This maneuver is what, four hours ahead of us? We can even tweak it so it's closer. It's a, about an hour and a half ahead of us, like in, on these time scales, that's pretty much right now. And what I wanna show you is how just a tiny change here. So right now the scale is set to a change of one meter per second, let's add Actually, let's select so we can see our actual distances here. There's our separation. Let's add uh, some prograde to this. Oh, I can see that that's making it worse, but notice that one meter per second prograde made a significant difference. Let's go retrograde. Let's see if we can manipulate this. Oh, now one thing that's happening here, I'm getting myself an Eve encounter again. That might happen. I'm gonna ignore that for now. Oh, good, now we're lost our Eve encounter. Gonna keep going and oh, oh, tiny little changes here. And come on, come on, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. There it is. Uh, we have now got ourselves a Duna encounter, albeit seven, eight years in the future. If we do ourselves a 31 meter per second burn, well, about now, <laughs> we can take a look at Duna here. And just to show you, show you just how sensitive this is, here's our Duna encounter right here. Um, let's go back to the maneuver. And notice you can switch between the two maneuvers again here. I'm working now with maneuver number one. Uh, you can tell because I have something in there. Maneuver number two, by the way, has absolutely no 
numbers in it, but that's okay. It's just there to give us our encounter several orbits in the future. It's kind of a dummy maneuver. We're never gonna perform a maneuver here. Let's go back to our first one again and put it on the little widgety tool again. I got the scale still at one meter per second, and if I do one more, notice that completely loses that. I gotta change this scale way down, like 0.1 meter per second. Well, I, it's probably about as close as I'm gonna get it. So <laughs> we'll do this burn, and then it, as we approach Duna, we can tweak this encounter in quite a bit better. Oh, I think I might have overcooked that just a little bit. Let's see what we got here. Oh, I still got my Dune Encounter. I'm all good, even though I thought I overcooked it. Uh, again, this maneuver here has no Delta V in it. That's the only one that's left. But it is there to, necessary for us to see our encounter that's coming up seven years <laughs> actually the actual encounter seven years 395 days in the future and as our probe takes the lazy route out towards duna let's go over what we've taken a look at in this video of course the main theme was multiple maneuver nodes and how to use them we use them to help plan out our burn so we know how much fuel we're going to be using before we even get started and then we took a look at two very specific situations we looked at a low Kerbin orbit rendezvous and then we skipped out to an interplanetary flyby but the idea of both was the same how we can use maneuver nodes to look multiple orbits into the future to help us plan our trip as efficiently as we can. And as our probe makes its way past Duna, I'm going to thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.